G'day folks. Well, this is sort of a crude but effective way of uh, bringing heavy machines into your workshop off trailers. I don't recommend it, but it does work. I have a plate securely bolted to the floor, my chain hoist, and the chain is wrapped around the 1.5 tonne machine. <laughs> and as you can see, I've already dragged it that far and it was not very hard. Certainly uh, taking some material off the trailer though. I'm gonna have to uh, get some more jacks and timbers under it, but that's to be expected. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, re-weld all this anyway. That was broken before I got it, but it's uh, gonna be a lot less happy after getting this machine off. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> yep, there we go, it's in. Someone's already trying to rat control cabinet. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Like yeah, take the whole lot. <laughs> several hundred or several thousand dollars worth of telemechanique control gear and a working Unilog 1020 control panel. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, you're stuck on the wood. Key. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got Rex Ross hydraulic control board. We've got various. Relays, mechanical relays, little socket mounted cube relays. I'm not sure what that is, uh, maybe a delay or something. DC power supply, the big heat sink on it. I'm thinking it's DC since it's got a big heat sink. Um, you wouldn't really put caps on it if it was AC. You'd oh, just yeah, have there's a, a stonking big there. Yeah, okay, so most of this is 24 volt. Control cards, another rack we'll get into. Yeah, it's not bad. Shame I don't have enough power. I need 20 kilowatts at, at 220 volts, three phase. All the heaters and things I think are 220. So yeah, I don't think I'll be running it, but I'll certainly pull some bits out of it. The best part is it didn't fall over. <laughs> there was a point there where it was, we were a bit worried about it falling over, wasn't it? Yeah, I was <laughs> standing here. <laughs> It's like, let's just stop, put a few braces against it, and then try moving away, and it kind of worked. I'll, yeah, have a bit of a clean up and shuffle it in a bit further. The flow, water flow gauges are working, but need cleaning and decalcifying. I wonder if I could get the cooling tower that came with it. I'm sure they wouldn't care if that went missing, although it looks like the um, yeah, flow meters are all rotting out. That's what happens when you use bleach to decontaminate your unregistered cooling tower. <laughs> Throw a bottle of bleach in it every 12 months, that's about all they did. Shocking. There's the little feed hole. that feeds the barrel. And there's a hydraulic motor up here too. Looks like a linear encoder, yep. There's a linear encoder on there, there's a linear encoder on the platinum, platins. There's some really cool stuff. And some flexi chain. I love this stuff. Yeah, I don't mind the tank. So it's pretty well made. The base. Well, the whole thing's a base. It's all welded yeah, to the uprights there. Cut yes. that off and split it off. Well, if you want it, I'm sure we could work out a deal. <laughs> it probably weighs 400 kilos. Could use it for my oil heater, I suppose. That's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's all completely integrated. Even this upright columns part of it. Nothing oxy can't fix. <laughs> Oxy's and Hydraulic oil. Yeah, many yeah, many well. fun pastimes like that. Well, it'll be an oil that? heater anyway. <laughs> oh, that's a um, that's a water cooling thing for the uh, hydraulic oil. Hydraulic oil temperature gets too high. This clicks in and you start circulating cooling tower water through it. Yeah, there's the hoses. So that's a um, in tank oil oil to water heat exchanger. Also useful for things. floppy e-stop that doesn't work. None of the e-stops latch and we cut a hole in the front just to, so you can shut all the parts in and out. It's not a very OH&S approved machine. But either way, it's an Ed Systems approved machine. Heavy, oily and full of cool bits. Alright, well, we're in and uh, yeah, <laughs> the shed already, already looks smaller with this in place. It's a very big machine. Well, it's tiny compared with injection molders, but it's big enough for this shed. It really is. So I'm going to 
lift the back up from its uh, original chain points and uh, get those blocks of wood out of there and just put the uh, jacking screw back into place or at least, no I'll use timbers but I'll get rid of that steel sheet and the uh, small timbers that are all jammed underneath and I'll put jacking screws back in there with aluminum pads and actually no, I'll jack it up high enough with the screws to get another hardwood timber underneath it and then just skid it around that or bits of uh, one and a half inch steam pipe do the Egyptian thing and roll it along lots of rollers and manual labour, that's all it's about <laughs> either way, uh, yeah I sort of want to move it over this way but I don't think I'm going to be able to at least I can get this door open now yeah it's bigger than I thought well, I was expecting it to be pretty big six foot by three foot by about six foot yeah six foot when you count the bits that I cut off <laughs> I think I'm about five and a half foot tall and uh, yeah not too bad let's get this guardian and everything off I'm gonna start stripping some bits off and just simplify it get rid of that get rid of all of that get the front cover off the uh, hydraulics down beneath that's where the business really goes on that's the ejector, as you can see it's got two proximity sensors one at the top to tell it that the ejector's in full open, or oh, was it fully extended position and one at the bottom to tell it the ejector is uh, fully retracted yeah it's not bad I've got to retract the uh, injection unit before I can uh, even try and close the die it's currently extended right out because it's designed to go in through here, through the top but that's no longer the case it's not going back on top ever again got lifting points leveling screws yeah pretty good I like it you just gotta make it lighter and smaller and move it over the other side <laughs> tons of telemechanic equipment tons and tons of it Look at that, the nice limit switches and things. There is so much cool stuff in here. So much cool stuff. I'll get the shop vac out and clean all these uh, PVC granules up. It's everywhere. And the chlorine's been attacking the uh, exposed steel. That's half the problem with PVC. You let it sit and burn and it'll uh, destroy everything. <laughs> chlorine smoke destroys everything. And this did have a uh, fume extractor on it as well. Still didn't help. It's still a rusty mess. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Two big, very custom made hydraulic cylinders. Well, proprietary made. I wouldn't say you'd buy them off the shelf. They're probably a Battenfelt specialty thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Also got a nice steel subframe. Just look at the welding on that thing. That's designed to take some uh, serious tonnage. 35 tons to be exact. 35 ton maximum clamp force. Between the tie bars anyway. Yeah. One of these is high pressure, one of these is low pressure. And it's coming straight off that main valve block which extends from one side of the machine to the other. That's how big it is. That is one monstrous multifunction hydraulic valve. Wow, this is going to be fun to dismantle and probably make an oil slick to rival the Exxon Valdez. <laughs> it's going to get pretty bad. You can see there's an interlock there that stops the platen from dropping when the system is off. Uh, there's oil still in here but if I were to wedge that up and disengage that rack the upper platen would probably drop don't know for sure but I'm not going to try just yet a little SMC pilot valve and that goes to this little cylinder here that's what toggles it Jesus, barely making contact <laughs> oh it's got a prox proximity sensor on it as well to tell it when it's disengaged as well as a stop screw 
yeah, spring return or just gravity return single single acting cylinder again nice welding there's one of these on each side for the uh, guard they thrust upward and raise the uh, guard yeah wow so many awesome bits stuff from Austria is just made of awesome it really is just like the angle um, injection molding machines Battenfeld injection molding machines are very expensive this thing's this thing was made in the year 2000 so it's not even that old pretty cool <laughs> I don't know how much this thing would be worth new maybe hundred thousand dollars or so at least I'd say at least a hundred thousand dollars <laughs>